And he looked at me and said, hey, what are you doing? What do you think? You know, and, and in the moment I was caught off guard because I, I really, not that I couldn't see myself in a role, but I just never thought of myself in that way. What I thought of myself, how I saw myself with the league is not, there was no title associated to me. I was just doing work for the league. That's how I saw myself. And, um, uh, you know, it, it took a couple people to say, well, well what do you think or, or what makes sense? And as we started, as I started to open my mind to the possibilities, it only made sense that I took a role because I was grooming myself for it unknowingly. Um, and, and, and that's, that's really how, you know, what started, uh, that the, the, the position for me. And like I said, that was three years ago and really enjoying it and having a blast. Welcome to this episode of the media's input. I am your host, James A. Paxson. To check out this interview and previous interviews, go to my YouTube channel, James Paxson. Episode 18 had world hockey report podcast host and his live show was on from nine to 10 AM mountain standard time. Mr. Cody Jansen, this episode has the deputy commissioner for the National Basketball League of Canada. He's going into his fourth season as deputy commissioner, and he says, "When time time flies by when you're having a lot of fun." So I believe he likes his job, Mr. Audley Stevenson. James, how are you? I'm good. How are we doing, sir? How's the vibe? Yeah, I'm great. You? Yeah, no, great. Thank you for the opportunity. Glad to be here. And yeah, yeah the right time. We, we, when you're enjoying yourself. Uh, you've got passion for what you do. Uh, it's certainly not work. You're just, you're, just, you're just enjoying the ride, right? And that's what I've been doing. How's the virus affected you, sir? How, what's the one big thing that's taken, that the virus has taken away from you in your everyday life? Yeah, I think, I think two sides of that, sort of personally and professionally. I mean, personally, it's forced us all to kind of get back to uh, what's important. Um, you know, I've, I've got a family, I've got kids. I mean, so that, that's also, you know, strong consideration points. Um, you know, when we, when, when, when school stopped and you know, you're now homeschooling, uh, that impacts how you do things. Uh, and then you think about what the long-term effects are, how we interact with individuals. I, I, I've never been on this many Zoom calls my entire life, but that seems to be the new, new norm these days. And that's something that we just have to, to, to get accustomed to. Uh, and then professionally as, as a league, um, we, we, we suspended play. I mean, uh, we, we absolutely uh, ha have no regrets about making that decision to spend, suspend play. Uh, March 12th, mm -hmm. I believe, was our last game play that we eventually um, canceled the season. Uh, and we believe that with this is done in the best interest of uh, our players, our fans, our supporters, uh, everyone that enjoys their product. So um, definitely, definitely a huge adjustment to everything that we do. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'll even, you know, I, I'll say that I might even went through a, a bout of mini depression, if you so to speak, having to lose that game and lose the sport. And, uh, you know, I remember, I think when it, when it probably hit me the most is I looked at the calendar uh, and I'm going, wow, we would have been in playoffs right now and we weren't playing at all. So, um, yeah, there's no question this virus ha has hit many of us, all of us. We've all been impacted in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but I truly believe in what uh, our, the direction our government officials have been telling us, our health officials uh, have had our, our best interests at heart. Uh, and I'm preparing, we as a league are prepared to sort of follow their direction uh, and come back when it's safe to play once again. At the moment, it's hard to foresee the future, but do you foresee fans at National Basketball League of Canada events when the season starts back up later this year? Yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot remains to be seen. I'm, I'm certainly hopeful. I think a big, a big part of that um, will be, you know, I think so. So there's two things that we're, we're, we're facing with here, James. And one is, you know, when when our health officials give us the indication that it's safe to go, but then when fans feel that and feel mm -hmm. confident that it's safe to go, and those are two entirely different things. Uh, you know, you, 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 and both you just got to be patient with. Um, I feel that. Uh, depending on where we're at, obviously, the, and, uh, the pandemic and where we progress as a country will guide where we go and what we end up seeing in terms of live sports. Uh, we certainly want that to be the case, and we hope that is, and we're very optimistic about that, but there's some un unanswered questions. So I, I can say when all, the optimist in me is absolutely we'll be back, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Coming up on the 10th season here, it'll be your fourth as commissioner. What are some new advances that has come into the league that hasn't been in the previous nine? Well, uh, I'll, I'll back up. Uh, yes, it's my fourth uh, year as deputy commissioner, but I, I've been with the league since the inaugural season. 
uh, from year one, I, the, the ups and downs, the growing pains, uh, all of it. I've, I've experienced it in some way, uh, sh some way, shape, or fashion. Uh, it's been an enjoyable ride. Uh, lots with a huge learning curve, and uh, you know, we, we you think back to when we started. You know, we brought basketball to Canada uh, at, a, at a pro level, and that's something that wasn't necessarily done successfully in the past or for a sustained period of time. And now we're going into year number ten, and oftentimes, you know, we often heard that we wouldn't make it out of year two, uh, and here we are going strong. So uh, we feel really, really good about that. Um, a, a lot of this year, more than anything else, not necessarily new, but really focusing on celebrating. You know, we really want to celebrate our accomplishments, celebrate what we've done, celebrate our past players, their 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 accomplishments, their feats. Uh, I mean, we truly think that you know we've, we've got some of the best uh, players in the world, and uh, you know, we're after after ten years of going strong, a nine song strong season, your reputation as a league starts to to grow and. And, and players now learn about us. And we oftentimes are getting players reaching out and going, hey, I, I've seen, I've heard, how do I be a part? Or, I've had friends, I've played, wh whatever. You know, how do I be a part? So I think a big part of what we do this coming season is celebrating what we've done uh, and doing it proudly. And, and we have much to be proud of. I'm really happy about that. What has changed most since you became the deputy commissioner? Well, uh, if anyone that knows about my role in the league, I was – uh, I, I was heavily involved with so from, from, a, from a content creation standpoint, uh, communications aspect, uh, publicity, things of that nature, social media, you know, it's a, a catch-all. And um, uh, be, being removed from my, so removing myself from that role, I think what's happened is, uh, and, and again, I, my, my background is I, I naturally sort of have a sort of content creation mindset and, 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 and how to tell our story. And, and how to engage with fans. And so what I've done now is brought that into the role. And we've done a lot more of that. We focused a lot more on and, and, and definitely creating, creating uh, content that's relatable, that resonates with people. Uh, and, and I really do feel that there's been a difference in, in how we present ourselves as a league as a result of that. What's one thing in the next upcoming years you hope to change about the league to get more people interested in watching and to make it you know, more popular? Yeah, I think I think uh, it's really important where you continue uh, you continue to do the good things that are working, right? And you know, we 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 have uh, in all our communities in which we exist, we have a, an incredible connection. Our teams have an incredible connection to the, to the places where they play. So we're not just there to play basketball; we're there to be a part of the fabric and fiber of our communities. And through that natural organic process and that grassroots approach, we really see some growth from there. And we have seen growth. And we continue to want to do that because that absolutely uh, has been working for us. Uh, again, our communities are, 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 are integral. Our community involvement is integral to what we do and how we've been doing things. And we want to continue that, but strengthen it as well. And certainly when you look at some of the issues that are taking place in our society, obviously the Black Lives Matter movement, the social injustice that are taking place, we want to be able to connect to some of those issues as well uh, to show that communities that we are here, we, are, we do stand with you, and we want to attack problems and challenges head on. Would you consider letting players do what the NBA is doing by writing certain phrases on their jersey instead of their name? J.J. Redick on the New Orleans Pelicans will have Black Lives Matters on his jersey, and other players will put uh, phrases on their jerseys. Would you consider doing that or maybe putting something on the courts next season? Yeah, it hasn't been something that's been talked about yet, but I mean, we were, we're from a planning stage, and we're probably still a little bit early. We certainly, as a league, have been talking about how we want to address it and how we want to acknowledge it. And I uh, you know maybe there's a patch on jerseys or something like that. We haven't nailed down specifically what that will look like, but I certainly do expect that there will be some sort of presence or statement in that regard uh, from the league standpoint. Absolutely. Who are a couple players in your mind as deputy commissioner who makes your league special? Who, if people aren't watching the league, you say you got to see these guys play. So, so the interesting aspect of the league and what, why I, I've been such a fan of it is that it's always been a tremendous uh, springboard or platform for players. Either maybe, maybe at the tail end of your career, a couple seasons ago, we had you know Glenn Big Baby Davis. Uh, who played the Boston, so won a championship with the Boston Celtics. You know, he was at a different stage of his career uh, where, you know, maybe he's not, not, I'm not saying suggesting that he's over again, 
but a different stage in terms of the, the, the latter part. Uh, and that provided an opportunity. And at the same time, you know, again, I'll use a guy like Carl English, who, uh, so Newfoundland, Labrador, he played internationally for 16 seasons. Uh, he, uh, he, he played for Team Canada, uh, played internationally all over the world, and, and then came back home. Uh, and, and retired, and his jersey was retired last, last season uh, in St. John's Newfoundland, the Mile One Center. So they're, 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 I'll use the word transit, if you will. The transit nature in our league allows players to come and go. And quite frankly, uh, you know, if a, if a player comes in and, and comes into our league and establishes himself and moves on to larger, bigger platforms, uh, maybe making more money well, in more other places, more than our league can pay, let's say as an example, that, that's kind of a success for us. Uh, and, you know, we don't want to hold this. We want to let them go. We want them to explore, develop, and grow their game and be able to contribute at a higher level. So uh, it's, it's always hard to nail down that one player because we've got so much that, that come and go. And for, for me, that's probably one of my favorite parts because it shows and proves that we, our, our league certainly has a place for you, regardless of what stage of your career you're at. Does your league see yourself as maybe someone where high school players who don't want to take the year in college here in the States could maybe go play in the NBLC and then go to the draft, possibly? So, I mean, something that's been talked about, and, and you know, there, there are certainly different schools of thought around that. We don't have any necessarily uh, – well, first of all, we haven't, we, we, we haven't uh, in, encountered that one specifically. I mean, there, there, was, uh, there was a player last year who, uh, who did play for us um, that sort of fell in that category, but it has something that's happened often. Uh, can it happen again? I, I believe so. Um, and will it happen again? It, you know, it remains to be seen. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a sort of interesting development of players. We're, we're starting to see a wider cross-section from a, large, from, from a lot more different backgrounds and experiences. So, I mean, it, 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 can it happen? Well, it's happened before, yeah. Um, will it happen again? It remains to be seen. But again, we want to, and have been trying to be uh, not, not think all things all players, but certainly uh, a place where players can hone their skills and, and their crafts. As a general basketball fan, where are your thoughts with the one and done rule? You know, are you a fan of it, or do you think if you go to college, you got to be there a little bit longer? Where's your thoughts with that? Yeah, it's an interesting one because you, 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 I really and I always felt it's, a, it's an individual you know, uh, uh, decision that has to be made. Uh, you know, look, if, if, there's, if there's an opportunity for a player uh, to, after a year of college, uh, to go out and make a legitimate earning, uh, to help his family uh, uh, or friends, whoever, uh, and get themselves out of, you know, maybe, maybe you hear stories of players coming from sort of poverty backgrounds or whatever uh, their situation is. Uh, you know, who, who, who is anyone to say that you can't do that? Uh, you know, you have to stay here. I think we're doing that, that individual that, that, you know, that young kid and his family and, you know, everyone else associated with them an injustice by trying to make that decree that this is what you shall do. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you've got, you, you, you've got some players that perhaps aren't ready for that jump or as ready as they think they, they may be and need that extra time to, to develop that they can get in that direction of, to learn the game at the college level. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's always been a, a very individual uh you know, decision that has to be made based on those set of circumstances. And what I'd hate to see is that it's dictated, this is what you have to do and, and lose sight of the fact that there's some other good things that can come out of it. Do you think that they should be allowed to go from high school straight to NBA? Well, I mean, the NBA, they've made some changes as well in, in, uh, to, to the age limit. And I think there's a level of maturity. I mean, you look at you know, the NBA, it's more, it's more than just the NBA game, it's the NBA life uh, and all that's associated with it, whether it be the travel, the practices, uh, the immediate spotlight and attention, all of those things factor in and are huge contributors uh, to the impact and how someone well, someone can perform. So um, I, I like the idea of having an age limit uh, because, you know, quite frankly, maturity, look, when I was coming out of high school, I don't think I would have been ready for that lifestyle because the maturity wasn't there. And, and, uh, and there are now, having said that, there's some rare, there are a rare few that can make that leap, leap successfully. Um, you know, you, you, you think of guys like LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Darnett. There's been a whole list of, list of players that have been successful. But at the same time, there have been a bunch that have not been either. So, it, uh, you know, I, I think I like the age description because maturity does play 
into, you know, hugely into that. Talk to me about Audley Stevenson, the fan. You know, when you were a kid, who were some of your favorite players that you watched and, you know, that you think were just some of the best players that played in the game? Yeah, you know, when I, when I grew up, I grew up in, in downtown Toronto. Was was always, always loved the sport, was always a, a huge fan. Um, I think the, the, the one player that sort of got everyone's attention was Magic Johnson and that Showtime Lakers play. I mean, you just, you, 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 you live to see them on the fast break and what they did and what he did. And you had your eyes glued on him all the way in that razzle, dazzle, fancy pass, the no looks and that kind of, that, that stuff got, got everyone excited. I don't care who you are. You just, you know, you got up for that. Um, as, you know, later on, when we got into sort of the 90s, I uh, became a really big fan of the Knicks. I was a really Knicks fan, big Knicks fan. I uh, loved Patrick Ewing. Um, loved that style of play, that rough. You know, you had the Oakleys and the Anthony Mason and John Starks and, you know, Mark Jackson, Gerald Wilkins. I mean, you had a whole bunch of guys that played really, really, really tough and was synonymous with New York Knicks basketball. And, uh, and, and that's that was never a Jordan fan, but, man, I hate that I beat up my Knicks every year. It was tough to watch. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I had a hard time watching the last dance because this reminded me of uh, all those battles. And they were fun to watch. Um, but I, I was rooting for the Knicks. Is it anywhere close to you, the Jordan and LeBron debate, or do you have one that's way ahead of the other? I think they're two, two different gen, they're generational players. We talk about players that just, uh, uh, for their time, if you will, are just at, at a different level. Uh, you know, I, I, I think what I've done over the last several years is stop comparing and really start appreciating. Because the skill sets are so unique. There's just some things that, you know, Jordan did, did on the court that, you know, LeBron James isn't there. But vice versa, I think there's some areas of LeBron's game that Jordan couldn't necessarily compete with. Uh, you know, the two different players appreciating what they have. Jordan's, you know, aerial dynamics was phenomenal. LeBron at 6'8", coming down like a freight train uh, down the court. It's, you know, it's just unheard of. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I truly, and I know that may sound like a wishy wash the answer, but I, I don't compare the two because they're not on that same level. Um, and uh, I just really appreciate them, what they offer us. You said you grew up in Toronto, and yeah. I, I'm one person who thinks that the Raptors have a pretty good chance to make it to the finals this year. What do you think the ceiling is for the Raptors? Hey, they're the defending champs at the end of the day, and you got to give them just due respect. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you think about on who on paper, who's got what and what. You know, they, they, they absolutely can come back and repeat. Uh, you know, you, you know before, before the season was paused, they were one of the best teams uh, in the regular season. Uh, they were playing some of the best basketball. Uh, you, 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 you know, sure, you take Hawaii out of the equation. Quite frankly, everyone thought that with Hawaii out, it would be a different team. They have not missed a beat. You had pieces and parts have stepped up uh, in a big way and have contributed to the culture of now what's called a championship city. So, you know, for, for Raptor fans, the expectation should be to defend your title because it's yours to defend. You've earned that right to defend it. And, 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 and there's no reason why they couldn't do that, in my opinion. <laughs> Who do you think is the biggest competition in the East for them? Would it be the Bucks? Well, I mean, certainly the Bucs, everyone will, will, will look to them, and I think that's that's fair. I mean, you know, Boston still is a very good team. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the Bucs, I mean, you know, you look at Giannis, and uh, in purpose, he didn't say his last name because I know I'm going to brutalize it. One of these days I'm going to get it right, but, you know, Giannis is, is another guy who, um, you know, not only, you know, can he arguably, you know, win the MVP, he probably could win Defensive Player of the Year as well. Um, and who knows, maybe if the – the Bucks go to the finals and they win. Maybe he can win final MVP too. I mean, you know, that kind of stuff is unheard of. And so, I mean, I think they're, they're, they're certainly a team that you got to keep an eye on as well. But a lot of good teams in these for sure. At the moment, for all current players, who is your top five NBA players? Five NBA players, man. Um, well, I mean, you know, LeBron will always be up there because he, he is that good. Um, I'm starting to, uh, it's funny, I, I think I've really started to appreciate Anthony Davis's game as of late. I think he's a, a solid player. 
Um, I've always been a fan or not. I know he's hurt, but Kyrie Irving, um, I think he's a special player and what not think and that's obviously with Durant when they when they come around they'll they'll certainly be a, a force to be reckoned with. Um, always been a Jimmy Butler fan. Um, guys that can play both ends of the court, court and just tough and hard nose. Um, those are th- th- those are solid players. I'm gonna throw on my guy Kyle Lowry just because I'm a hometown guy and I gotta show some love. How much should I give you there? Four? Is that five? You gave me sure five. I gave you five. I'll, I'll throw in Kawhi too, just because uh, I, you know, I, I, I truly he was he was a guy who I truly appreciated a whole lot more when he arrived. Um, uh, got got get, getting an opportunity to see him night in and night out, realizing uh, how special he is. But but there's a whole host of guys. I mean, we could we could be talking forever. The top players in this league. Uh, a really good time for basketball right now. When it comes back to your league and the NBLC, why have you guys made it so long? Because a lot of these leagues develop and they start out and they make it two, three, four years max. But you're going on to your 10th year right now. Why have you guys made it so long? Who are some of the people that have helped you have a successful league? I give a lot of credit to our ownership, our, you know, our team's ownership group, the board of directors. Um, I don't think they get enough credit for the work that's put in. Um, that they do and the manner in which they have enabled me and empowered me to do my job, uh, the commitment. Uh, you know, if, if you really look at it, quite frankly, you know, our teams aren't making money hand over fist. And, you know, teams are, if you look at the dollars and cents, you know, you've got teams that are losing money. But they, it, it, there's a strong commitment to, to what was started 10 years ago. Uh, and, and that remains to be the case. It hasn't changed. Um, so I, I, I give that, I, I give the ownership group a ton of credit uh, of being able to, to, to push things forward. Uh, there were previous commissioners prior to me that I have, who I picked up where they've left off and, um, and I, I, I can't claim it without acknowledging uh, what they've done as well. So a lot of titles working behind the scenes uh, are, are volunteers, our game ops staff. Um, obviously, the players are, in terms of their commitment and wanting to perform and continue to support a league in that fashion. It's a bunch of people, James, I'll tell you. Uh, that ball just kind of rolled up your sleeves and said, "Let's, you know, let's continue to push this thing forward." And yeah, yeah, that's we wouldn't be here at year number ten without them. Are there any talks of expansion? I mean, it's, there's always an interest in expansion. Uh, I, I think what we what we'll see now with uh, with the pandemic that'll slow that down a little bit. Uh, and so what we've been in conversations now more of focusing on how we uh, solidify our base and how we support our teams, how we make them stronger and, and things of that nature. So, uh, but expansion is always there. We, 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 you know, we want to, we certainly do want to grow a league and uh, that's always on the table as a, you know, something where you actually want to go in for sure. Going into year four of your job, what do you think is the hardest part of being deputy commissioner? I is improving upon what's been done. I, I, I'm always sort of personally challenging myself from the standpoint of, okay, so you, 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 you know, this is great that you did that yesterday or last week or the day before yesterday. Uh, but now what are you going to do to, to the up the game? Um, a couple of years ago, we had a, a league slogan that was called Raise the Bar. It was always, how are you going to do more? How are you going to raise the bar and do better? Uh, and so I think that's, that's always a challenge. Uh, I don't think there's ever a desire to be complacent or to be comfortable or just be satisfied with what was done. Yeah, that was great, but what now can you do to do better? And that, that will always be my personal challenge. Where do you hope the league is in five years? Well, again, you talked about expansion. I mean, certainly, you know, coast to coast and across Canada, that certainly is a direction, uh, an area to be in for sure. So, uh, you know, that, that certainly is, is something that, that's on our radar we'd like to see happen. Um, you know, a lot has to happen for that to get there, but that certainly is uh, one of our goals. What is, besides the pandemic, the hardest thing that the league is facing right now in improving and having expansion? Well, um, it's, it, I mean, again, besides the pandemic stuff, because that's the, that's the number one agenda on everyone's list, most likely. Um, but certainly, uh, sort of the, 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 the post-pandemic, I think, we'll, we'll, we now have to address and uh, certainly uh, encourage and inspire and motivate people to feel that you're safe. But that's an important one. You want to feel that you're safe and that you're going in a safe situation. And so I, I think that's going to be a real big challenge. For, for, for quite some time. 
um, uh, you know, if we're, 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 it could be maybe when there's a vaccine or whenever that comes and how that will influence. And so that, that's going to be a big one. And, and, then, and then as the economy starts to roll around, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're generated by uh, uh, fans, right? Attendance is a big part of the driver for us. So uh, if, if the economy isn't good, uh, you know, sports, as much as people enjoy them, may not be the priority in terms of, you know, what they put their dollars towards. So those are sorts of things that, you know, the state or uh, economic state of, uh, of, of our economies are, are, are going to be huge as well. At the moment, you're expecting, you know, better players to come in the league. But do you think there's any part of their game that's going to look different than the past 10 years? You know, do you think there'll be better defenders? Do you think there'll be better shooters? How do you think the game will evolve? Well, I think the game has been evolving. We've seen big men shoot threes. I mean, that was something that was uh, unheard of. And now guys like Joel Embiid are parking outside the three-point line. Mark Gasol for the Raptors are, are is, you know, easy. He was jacking them up as well. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're, you're seeing – and even look at the, the evolution of basketball. It started off as a big man's game. And then it slowly went to the guard, guard play took over and smaller guards started to the spotlight. And, and now you're sort of seeing it evolve again. And I think for me, you know, for years I was involved with sort of youth sports. And I, just, I always felt it was important that, uh, that when you're teaching a game, you know, regardless how tall the 12-year-old Jimmy is, you, know, you, you teach them all of the game. You teach them to the dribble and skills. You don't break off the group into two separate groups and the smaller players dribble and the bigger players learn how to rebound. You teach everyone everything, and that's how you grow and evolve the game. What does the future look like for Audley? Do you think you'll be at this job for a while? Are you hoping, you know, change soon? Are you hoping to bring in more people at, like, the positions that help you out as deputy commissioner? What does the future look out for you? Well, uh, it's, it's, you know, I've always been weak first. Uh, it's always been about what, what can we be, what can be done and what can be, uh, what can we do to advance or grow the league? Uh, we, 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 the last few years and during my tenure, we absolutely have been bringing on more people to do more things. Uh, you know, I think when I, when I uh, went into the deputy commissioner role in year one, my biggest challenge was to let go of the stuff I was doing before. Like I, I, I still, I found myself kind of going back. I had, to, I had to sever the ties and let go and trust others and bring other people on board to say, now this is your baby. This is what you're responsible. This is, I'm leaving for you. I'm going over here. Um, so that, that was always, that was one of my biggest challenges, uh, but it's been happening, you know, year over year over year, we've been doing more, we've been, we've been enlisting more, uh, and, that, and that's how we've been growing. So, um, uh, you know, in terms of where I go in the future, uh, I don't know. I, I really haven't put much thought into where I per, per personally want to be. And I've just been so much about how do we grow the league and, and how do we support the league and uh, uh, whether I do it in this capacity or another one, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. I think that, you know, I, I firmly entrenched myself into where I, where I want to be. Uh, we started something special and we want to continue it all the way through. Where can people follow you and the league on social media and get the best news available for the National Basketball League of Canada? Sure. Well, uh, nblcanada.ca is a new website. NBL Canada is on, on Twitter, you know, on Instagram, uh, you know, social media, you know, the LinkedIn page uh, for the league. Uh, myself personally, uh, Commission at NBLC uh, is uh, on Instagram. I'm also at The Odd Man, which is not O D D, it's A U D M A N, The Odd Man, on Twitter, Instagram as well. Um, I think those are some uh, good places to start if, you're, if your listeners or viewers are, are looking to learn more about NBL Canada and what it's all about. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited. You know, December comes around. I definitely want to watch some. And, you know, it's, it's a fun league. And I definitely think it would be a substitute for when the NBA isn't going on to watch your, at the NBLCA. Well, I, I do appreciate that. We you know we, we, we're proud of what we've done. Um, over the last nine seasons, and we're really looking forward to uh, big things for year number 10. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the interview. To see this nice. interview and previous interviews, go to my YouTube channel, James Paxson. And as always, thank you to the guest, Mr. Audley Stevenson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.